much for stopping by. As promised, I'm going to give you my contracts memorization list and just read it out. Now, there are other lists out there that use different acronyms and or use different terminology, but they usually mean the same or similar things. Um, they may be ordered a little bit differently. So my uh, an acronym is L let, let's forgive everyone today because love rules. L F E T B L R. Those are seven components for contract law. This is the outer checklist. This is what you jot down on essays or just on your notepad as a scratch paper reference. Law, formation, early defenses, terms, breach, later defenses, remedies, contracts, law. Okay, so you just write L F E T B L R and know that it's seven just to double check and say the sentence out loud if that's what you want to use. Now here is a little bit more detail. So basically uh, you get an issues checklist. Is it uh, for the first one, law. What's the governing law? UCC or common law, Article 2 of UCC. If it's mixed, you uh, look at the predominant factor. Now with common law, these basics are that you uh, know that common law is SIR, services, intangibles, and real estate. Elements of a contract are uh, at common law are Q-tips, Quantity, time, performance, subject matter. Now, formation. Formation of the contract. Offer, acceptance, consideration, and no defenses to an enforceable contract. Do you have a contract, right? That's what you're asking. A party entering into a contract note must have capacity co to contract minors or pe people that have been adjudicated insane or uh, incapacitated uh, like senile can't enter into a contract. Defenses rising during formation, statute of frauds, SOF, statute of frauds, misrepresentation, fraud, unconscionability, fraud. Now you can, if you see in a fact pattern statute of frauds, you can jot down on your note pa paper if you have a note, if they let you use scratch paper, SOF, uh, or PER, parole evidence rule. So basically, fraud and unconscionability are defenses to uh, the contract. It discharges the duty to be obliged to the contract if the other party uh, was inducing it through fraud or, you know, unconscionability. Anyway. Contract terms, performance contracts, waiver, PER, and then the parole evidence rule exceptions, which is PER, modification, third party, assignment, delegation, and novation. Now with breach, you're going to look for a material breach or a minor breach, breach and you're going to look uh, for anticipatory repudiation. Uh, warranties, accord and satisfaction, things like that. Um, so that would be something that might allow you to discharge the contract duties uh, if there's some kind of breach. And also if you're going to sue, you have to see if there's a breach in the contract, right? Okay, now defenses arising later. Valid versus void or voidable. Conditions, precedent, impossibility, impracticability, Frustration of purpose, remedies, damages, foreseeable certain duty to mitigate, restitution, specific performance. By the way, these are trigger words. I'm going to go right into the uh, details right now. So here is um, the key definitions from, that go along with what we just said for your outer checklist. Okay. So again, when you're doing your essays, you're just going to jot down a very brief, because you don't want to waste valuable time writing out definitions. You're going to memorize these de definitions uh, by listening to them uh, over and over. 
rote learning. Uh, you can watch this as many times as you want. Anyhow, so the uh, the law that governs L, the first, let's forgive everyone because we love rules. Um, Uniform Commercial Code, UCC versus Common Law, where a contract is for the sale of goods, movable chattel, identifiable at the time of the contract, UCC governs. Where the contract is for services intangibles, i.e. marriage, real estate, it is Common Law. Formation. A contract consists of an offer, acceptance, and consideration, mutual assent, and no defenses. A contract is a promise or set of promises for the breach of which the law gives a remedy or performance of which the law in some way recognizes a duty. It is in Restatement Second and uh, also some other Burr preps use this as their definition too. By law, an enforceable contract must be by the party entered that have capacity to contract. Minors and persons adjudicated in capacity can't enter into a contract. Merchant, one who regularly deals in this type of good or one who holds themselves out as having special skills or knowledge regarding this type of good pertaining to the contract. Merchant's Firm Offer <clears throat> Under 2.205 of the UCC, a signed writing which is not revocable for lack of consideration during the time stated a reasonable time, but in no event to exceed three months. Preliminary negotiations, communications between parties prior to an offer being tendered. Mailbox rule, an offer is effective upon receipt. An acceptance is effective upon dispatch. Note, under the UCC, we learn that under 2606, wait a minute, that might be too, uh, an offeree can accept in any reasonable manner unless the offeror specifies an unambiguous method of acceptance. So if the offeree can argue that a pro properly posted acceptance should be reasonable method of acceptance, then the mailbox rule is technically upheld. If for some reason just mailing the acceptance is unreasonable, then it would not apply. Then there's the case where the offer expressly states how they want acceptance. If the offeror expects express notice and knowledge of acceptance, it's in the text of the offer, then the mailbox rule wouldn't be okay because just mailing it would not meet those terms. So the mailbox rule is out of common law, and acceptance becomes valid upon posting of the acceptance, not received by the offeror. Note, the opposite applies in options, options contracts, which we're going to get to in a few minutes. The acceptance must be received by the offeror before the close of the option period. Advertisement, unless sufficient to invoke an acceptance, an advertisement is an invitation to deal rather than an offer. An offer requires, one, an express present intent to be legally bound to a contract, certain and definite terms, and communication to an identifiable offeree. Contract elements at common law. Q-tips, quantity, time of performance, identity of parties, price and subject matter. The UCC only requires quantity. Counteroffer, a termination of the power of acceptance 
of the original offer and a new offer. Termination. Revocation. An offer is freely revocable by the offeror unless it is accepted prior to the termination. Revocation. The offeree detrimentally relied on the offer or there was an option contract. Indirect revocation. An offer is deemed revoked <clears throat> despite direct communications between the parties if the offeree obtains reliable notice that the offeror has changed their mind. Lapse. The expiration of time stated in the offer or, if not stated, a reasonable time thereafter. Rejection. Unequivocal non-assent to the terms of the offer. Acceptance. The unequivocal assent to the terms of the offer. Acceptance requires one unequivocal terms of acceptance, an offeree with power to accept, and three communication of acceptance. Note acceptance element to the after offer. If applicable, do the mailbox rule separate from the acceptance discussion. Mailbox rule belongs before acceptance. Acceptance by conduct. The offeree performs an act which would be considered acceptance with the intention of accepting the offer. Accepting non-conforming goods. Non-conforming goods are an acceptance and a breach or a counter-offer. If non-conforming goods are merely shipped, it is both an acceptance and a breach where a shipment is accompanied by notice that the goods are merely an accommodation and no contract is formed. It is a counter-offer. Perfect tender rule. Recipient may accept all, some, or none, returning what they do not wish to keep. Consideration. Consideration is that which is bargained for to the legal detriment of the parties. Detrimental reliance. Reasonable reliance on the representation of another, causing the worsening of one's position. Promissory estoppel. Prior or contemporaneous negotiation and agreements that contradict or modify the contractual terms are le legally irrelevant if the written contract is intended as a complete writing. A promise which induces reasonable reliance may be enforced to avoid injustice. Equitable estoppel. Ricketts versus Scott Horn. This is a story uh, or a case study where a grandfather gave a promissory note to his granddaughter and he didn't want her to work so he told her he'd give her two thousand dollars if she quit her job. She quit her job but he died and she tried to get the money from the estate executor but they said no there's no consideration you don't have a contract and she said oh yeah and she sued the estate for money. The court held that although she didn't give her grandfather consideration, generally enforceable contracts do require a promise to be supported by a bargain for consideration. The reliance dependence on the fact that causes the party to act or refrain from acting. Promissory note written, a promise for a special, specified amount of money. Now, see Restatement Second, uh, which says promise reasonably inducing action or forbearance. So, a promise which the promisor should reasonably expect to induce an action or forbearance on the part of the promisee or the third person, which does induce such an action or forbearance, is binding if injustice can be avoided by, o by enforcement of the promise. The remedy granted for breach may be limited as justice requires. A charitable subscription or a marriage settlement is binding under subsection 1 without proof that the promise induced action or forbearance. Third party beneficiaries. The third party must have been present at the formation of the contract. Typically. If the third party was added later look into assignment or delegation. Intended can sue. 
incidental can't sue privity generally required to have standing to sue. Now there are exceptions. C. Lawrence versus Fox, New York. This is a seminal case that opened the door to third parties suing for breach that didn't have original privity. Holly loaned $300 to Fox with the promise that Fox would pay Holly's debt to Lawrence, which Fox was in breach of. Lawrence sued Fox and won the amount owed plus interest. Fox appealed. So basically what happened was Lawrence was ordered to pay Fox even though uh, this third party was not part of the original contract of the loan. Okay, intent to benefit from the fact pattern. Classification, donee gift, creditor debt, incidental, no rights, vesting from the fact pattern. How and why and when they vested. So here you examine the entire fact pattern to see the nuances in the law. Sometimes it's not uh, so, you know, the Lawrence versus Fox is a perfect example. Assignment of rights. Authorization for another to receive rights from the contract. A signer must adequately describe by the way, there will be some video links below from other people that might explain this a little better to you if you uh, want to go over it, okay? The assigner must adequately describe rights to be assigned, manifest intention to vest those rights in assignee, exceptions, future rights, generally. Rights are banned to change substantially the obligor's duty at common law, requirements contracts are not assignable. Substantially changes obligor's duty. At UCC, assignment is permissible if reasonable. Delegation of duties. Authorization for another to render performance of a legal duty. Most duties can be assigned with the following exceptions. Duties that involve personal judgment and skill changes the obligee's expectant, expectancy requirements output contracts are examples. Personal services service which is too personal may not be delegated. Anticipatory repudiation express communications repudiating a duty to perform under the terms of the contract. Demand for assurance. If reasonable grounds for insecurity or performance arise, a party may make a written demand for assurances of performance, suspending their own performance until such assurances are tendered. Breach of contract, an unjustified failure to perform an absolute duty. A. Material breach under UCC. Rules for breach are different under UCC. Perfect tender rule applies to contracts for a single delivery and provides that if the goods fail to conform to the contract in any respect, the buyer has three choices. Reject the whole within a reasonable time, accept the whole, or accept any commercial unit and reject the rest. Exceptions. Installment contracts. Perfect tender rule does not apply where the parties have contracted for more than one delivery. Seller's right to cure must be given notice. New tender must issue. Also, there are divisible contracts uh, where they divide performance into agreed equivalents. Material breach. Excuses for non-breaching party from continued performance. Minor breach. Continued performance is required. Non-breaching party may sue for defective performance. May recover damages, must still perform. 
anticipatory repudiation. C number 31, I just went through that. Okay, defense to formation, statute of frauds. You can remember it by writing down SOF and MUM, SOF MUM, misrepresentation, unconscionability, and mistake are what MUM stands for. So let's go over the statute of frauds again. Certain types of contracts must be evidenced by a writing sufficient detail to describe essential terms. Those contracts are marriage contracts, real estate, debt of another contracts that can't be completed, contracts that can't be completed in one year, that's the O, and G, goods over 500. So that would be Mr. Dog, okay? Let me put that in here real quick. And there are substitute. Oh, shoot, what just happened? I don't know. I cannot believe this. I somehow hit a button and it just, okay. Sorry guys, hang on a second. Am I gonna have to do this all over? I don't even see the numbers on here. Guys, I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. I wanted to put right here Mr. Dog, and I guess it's okay. Um, so this is an acronym to remember um, statute of frauds and apologies um, if you want to slow this down or speed it up you can with the little wheel on the there's an adjustment on the there's adjustments on the um, YouTube videos so uh, you could speed it up or slow it down, watch it as many times as you want. Okay, so we were at substitutes of statute of frauds. S, sufficient memo. A writing containing essential terms of the agreement signed by the party to be charged. Performance. A party's performance in reliance on opposing the party's oral promise for which a court may hold that the statute of frauds does not apply. Exception, parole evidence, where a party relied detrimentally, writing by the parties is intended to be a final embodiment of the agreement, may not be contradicted. Parole evidence does not allow discussions prior to contracting to be admitted unless to clear up an ambiguity or other exception. Integration clause or merger clause is a clause in a written contract that declares that contract to be completed and the final agreement between the parties is often placed at or towards the end of the contract. Modernly as rebuttable presumption, total integration, a final writing which may not be contradicted partial integration, a writing which m may be supplemented by consistent additional terms but may not be contradicted, indefiniteness, when terms are so uncertain that a court cannot fill in the missing terms, ambiguity, uncertainty of meaning or intention, misrepresentation, may be used as a defense when a party makes a misrepresentation prior to the other signing the contract. State of mind of the other party making misrepresentation need not be intentional. Material fact, if 
It must pertain to a material fact, not an opinion, justifiable, and actual reliance. The party must, in fact, rely on the misrepresentation, unconscionability. Now, these are all discharges, or these are these are breaches that can be uh, make the contract um, disputable. You know, give you a case for court. So, unconscionability, where a contract or term within a contract is unconscionable, the court may refuse to enforce it. Mistake. A mistake is an erroneous belief at contracting that certain facts are true. It can be argued as a defense if, the, if raised successfully can lead to the agreement in question being found void, ab initio, or voidable, or alternatively an equitable remedy may be provided by the courts. Common law has identified three different types of mistake in contract. The unilateral mistake, the mutual mistake, and the common mistake. The distinction between the common mistake and the mutual mistake is important. Mistake can be mistake of law. When a party enters into a contract without the knowledge of the law, the contract is affected by such mistakes, but not void. The reason here is that ignorance of the law is not an excuse. However, if a party is induced to enter into a contract by the mistake of law, then such a contract is voidable. Mistake of fact, where both parties enter into an agreement are under a mistake. As a matter of fact, essential to the agreement, the agreement is void. Mutual mistake, no meeting of the minds, both parties have mistaken assumption. Unilateral mistake. One party knew or should have known of the mistake. Incapacity. A contract entered into by a person lacking mental capacity is voidable by them or their guardian, but not by the other party. Duress. When plaintiff's consent is induced by physical force, threats of force, or even wrongful acts by the defendant causing economic loss. Battle of the forms. Different terms, UCC 2-207. If both parties are merchants under the majority rule view, the additional terms shall become part of the contract unless the offer expressly limits the terms of the offer. The additional or different terms materially alter the offer or the original offeror notifies the offeree that they object to the terms within a commercially reasonable time. The knockout rule, minority rule, which states that different terms knock each other out of the contract. UCC, gap fillers prevail. UCC gap fillers, the UCC will imply all open terms except quantity. Dropout rule, minority rule, which states that different terms always drop out of the contract. Contract terms, and performance issues. Conditions. A condition is an act or event that must occur before performance of the other party is due. If it does not occur, the performance of the other party is excused. Conditions can be express or constructive. Express conditions. An express condition contract is one in which the terms are expressed verbally, either orally or in writing, a condition that is clearly stated in the language of the contract. An express condition spells out under which circumstances a specific obligation might be affected contained in the contract. Implied, constructive conditions, inferred by the express conditions, it is one supplied by the court for fairness. In fact, conditions such as good faith, cooperation, and work performed in a workmanlike manner as judged by a reasonable person. In law, constructive conditions inferred by the express conditions. 
condition precedent, a condition which much must occur to create an absolute duty performance. Concurrent conditions must be performed simultaneously. Frustration of purpose. When unforeseeable events undermine the purpose for entering into the contract. Impracticability. Impossibility. When circumstances change the extent that continued performance becomes extremely impracticable, impossible, continued performance may be excused. Impracticability is subjective. Impossibility is objective. Modification. A change in the terms of the original contract requiring mutual assent and new consideration under common law. Under UCC, only mutual assent and good faith are required. Waiver, a party's voluntary relinquishment of a right. Novation, a new party is substituted into the contract with the agreement of all parties involved, extinguishing the rights and duties of the substituted party. Rescission, termination of liability and restoration of the parties to their former positions extinguishing the contract general expectation damages awarded for loss of expectation under the terms of the contract special consequential damages above and beyond general expectation damages which flow from a breach when there is sufficient reason for the defendant to foresee those damages at the time of the contract Hadley versus Baxendale of a Shakur 1854 this is an English law case that set um, so basically this is a breach of contract case for damages uh, Hadley the plaintiff a mill operator in Gloucester hired a carrier Baxendale to ship damaged mill shaft for repair and he suffered a 300 pound loss when the defendant delayed shipping it resulted in the mill being shut down five days longer than anticipated or that reasonable shipping time would have been. The outcome laid down two rules regarding damages. One, only those damages reasonably arising from the breach may be rewarded, awarded, excuse me, and um, foreseeability and assumption of the risks. So basically, uh, this defined that, um, you know, the special circumstances. Did uh, the parties at the time understand at the time of the contract were they made aware of the fact that um, a delay would cause uh, their sh business uh, to be shut down until the ship uh, was shipped back and you know if there was a delay so basically uh, there's a question of uh, did the um, did Hadley uh, the complainer or plaintiff um, assume the risk when he went and shipped with uh, Baxendale. So, um, specific performance, equitable remedy compelling a party to perform a contract according to the agreed-upon terms. Now, this is a unique subject matter. Uh, by the way, service contracts, you cannot force a person to uh, perform. But it's an equitable remedy. Um, anyway, so reliance damages. Costs incurred by the breaching party in reliance on the contract. Restitution damages. Quasi-contract. A remedy implied in law to prevent unjust enrichment of a benefit conferred. Avoidable consequence rule. Mitigation of damages. Losses which could have been avoided by the use of reasonable means are not recoverable. 
recover substitute goods purchased on the open market for those promised but not delivered. Incidental damages. Costs incurred in finding substitute performance, including costs incurred in unsuccessful attempts, liquidated damage. Liquidated damages, excuse me. A reasonable forecast of damages provided for in the contract. Lost volume sales. Uh, lost volume sales. A seller may recover their lost profits if they have unlimited inventory and a limited customer base, even if the subject matter has been sold to another customer. Express warranty under the UCC. An express warranty is created if any of the following. Uh, an aff affirmation of fact or promise made by the seller or the buyer relating to the goods. A description of the goods or a sample model which become part of the basis of the bargain. Requirements, output contracts, preferred under UCC as long as in good faith, but limits liability to reasonable demands of the other party. Good faith is consideration. Requirements contract. There is a good faith effort on the part of the buyer to have requirements. Outputs contract. There is a good faith obligation on the part of the seller to have output. Installment contract. Perfect tender rule does not apply if nonconformity in one or more installments substantially impairs the value of the entire contract, then the entire contract is regarded as in breach. And the buyer can not only reject the installments, but can also cancel the entire contract. Service contracts. Contracts for services fall under the rules of the common law, not the UCC. Unilateral contract. A contract whereby the offeror is bargaining for performance rather than a return promise. Bilateral contract, a contract whereby parties bargain for exchange promises of performance. Options contracts, an option contract is a promise to hold an offer open for a fixed amount of time. Nominal consideration may make an option binding. Miscellaneous contract issues, course of dealings, sequence of previous conduct between parties to a particular transaction which establishes a common basis of understanding for interpreting their intentions. Pre-existing duty, a duty which is one already legally bound to perform. Implied warranty of merchantability, unless the agreement expressly provides otherwise assurances applied, implied in law, sorry, that a product will do no harm in normal use is generally fit for normal use and where a seller has reason to know a purchaser's intended use, fitness for a particular purpose, UCC 2314, generally fit for normal use, UCC 315, fitness for a particular purpose, voidable contract, a contract which can be affirmed or rejected at the option of either one of the parties, a contract that is void as to the wrongdoer, but not void as to the wrong party, unless the party elects to treat it as void. Undue influence, the improper use of power of or trust in a way which deprives a person of free will. Illusory promise, statements which lack substance of a promise. Excuse of condition waiver, conditions are excused by failure to cooperate. Waiver, anticipatory repudiation, an anticipatory repudiation is an unequivocal expression by a party occurring before the time for performance is due that she will not perform the contract. Non-repudiating party may do any or all of the three. Sue immediately, suspend performance, urge performance. Voluntary disablement means that one party to a contract voluntarily engages in some conduct that makes 
it virtually impossible for him to fulfill his obligation it is not absolutely impossible but the circumstances are such that it would be more than extremely unlikely that he will be able to perform and in these circumstances the other side is excused from her obligations the law will not force one side to perform if it is unlikely or impossible for the other side to perform for contracts covered by uniform commercial code voluntary disablement would give rise to the other party's right to seek written assurances of performance if such assurances were not given within 30 days the party seeking such assurances could consider the voluntary disablement a breach of contract promissory estoppel the doctrine of promissory estoppel also referred to as detrimental reliance prevents one party from withdrawing a promise made to a second party if the latter has reasonably relied on that promise and acted upon it to its detriment substantial performance performance of the primary necessary terms of the agreement injunction a court order commanding or preventing an action breach of warranty breach of an express or implied warranty relating to the title quality content or conditions of goods sold there is in every contract for the sale of goods a warranty that the seller has good title to the goods in addition a merchant seller impliedly warrants that the goods sold are merchantable including the fitness for their normal use UCC 2314 in and particular purpose where the seller knows the buyers intended use UCC 2315 bona fide purchaser a purchaser who has in good faith paid valuable consideration for property without notice of prior adverse claims okay that's it guys we have completed the list and you can listen to this as many times as you want and commit it to memory and it should be a, a substantial comprehensive overview of a complete uh, contracts exam uh, in most cases uh, again if you're taking a class in law school or um, any kind of studies this is basically aimed at the uh, bar but um, the first year students law bar exam but it certainly can be applied in other ways because it's kind of universal so so I want to thank you for your time and listening and I'm just scrolling back up to the top so we can look one last time at the outer checklist that we just went over remember let's forgive everyone today because love rules right that's the general outer checklist that I created so it's L F E T B L R look at the law look at the formation look at the early defenses the terms the breach the later defenses and the remedies okay thanks a lot take care bye